Well, you can't expect every trip to the farm to begin with an epic sunset, but we're sure glad we're here nonetheless. Now, here's the big question. What are we going to do tomorrow? D did you hear that? I think the frogs want to know. Well, I'll tell you. We're going to plop one in the pond. I think they like that. Hi, George here and welcome to Tales from Target Sweep. And yes, we are at the farm again. And our focus this trip is going to be to plop one in the pond. No, I mean really, this is episode number two of our plop one in the pond series. And if we're successful, we're going to launch one of these from the house right over there. And it's going to make a big splash in the pond right over there. And if we're really lucky, we're going to get that on camera. We'll see. Uh, what was I going to say? Hmm. Oh yes. Please hit subscribe. I mean really, hit that subscribe button. And then if you click on that little bell, YouTube says you'll get a notification every time I upload a new video. Usually on Tuesday. Hey, but this is really important. If you stay with us to the end of the video, you'll get to see what it looks like to have a cannonball come right at you. I think you'll agree it'll be worth the wait. If you were here for episode number one of our Plop One in the Pond series, you saw us capture a muzzle velocity of 265 feet per second for one of these guys coming out of a little, little dictator. And in our original planning for this episode, we used that number and calculated that we were going to need a really steep launch angle of 70 degrees in order to keep from overshooting the pond. You know, the more we thought about it, the less we liked that 70 degree launch angle. That was going to put this thing way up in the air and it was going to have a really long time of flight. And so we thought, let's reduce the powder charge some, lower that muzzle velocity, and see if we can't lower the launch angle. So off camera, I went down there yesterday, and uh, with, a, with some lighter powder charges, I recorded a muzzle velocity of 225 feet per second. And so we put that number into the calculation and came up with a launch angle of 32 degrees. And in theory, that's going to put us in the middle of the pond. So rather than me keep yakking down here, even though it is a pretty setting. Let's reconvene up there at the house and, um, and we'll get set up for a shot. And you know, there have been people that have wondered if this was a real back, backstop or was this a green screen? And I don't know why they thought that. Okay, you probably have noticed a couple of changes already. Uh, first one is that we, we moved from the house out here on the other side of the barn. And before rumors start flying, let me just say it had nothing to do with people trying to binge watch HGTV. And the other thing is that in the process of getting everything moved over here and leveled up and the cannon set up, the mortar set up and everything, well, let me just say, I needed a fresh shirt. And not that I'm trying to make excuses, but we really haven't had a chance to accurately measure the change in distance to the pond. But we're pretty sure it's in the 40 yard range. And so with that said, using our 225 uh, foot per second muzzle velocity calculation, we're going to have to change the launch angle from 32 degrees to 40 degrees. And that should put us in the middle of the pond. That's the theory at least. But Austin is down at the pond and uh, getting set up. He's going to put a, Go a GoPro at the water's edge and he's going to get his drone in the air above the pond camera rolling and we'll be, we should be able to have two camera perspectives if indeed we do plop one in the pond. But while we're waiting for him to get set up, let me just talk a little bit more about our setup here. You know, if you've watched the last couple of videos that we've done, you've seen this little guy in action. And uh, what he is, is a model, a small scale, model 1861 Seacoast Mortar. And most of them were set up along the coast, as the nomenclature says, but one in particular was brought in by rail car to um, the outskirts of Petersburg, Virginia, and it was used in uh, skirmish there. And that particular model was nicknamed the Dictator. So if you've wondered why I call this guy the Little Dictator, well, there you have it. So uh, let me give Austin a call and uh, see if he's ready down at the pond and we can get this show on the road. Okay, I talked to Austin down there and he's in a safe place and the drone and the GoPro are both recording and so let's get this show on the road. I think I said that already.
Well, what do you think? <laughs> Was there ploppage? I don't know either, but uh, I'll tell you what. I'm going to powder this guy's behind one more time. We'll send that cannonball down range. And then we'll reconvene in the grand room and we'll go over all the footage. What happened down there is a whole lot more interesting, we hope, than what happened here. But hey, don't forget, if you stay with us to the very end of the video, you'll get to see what it's like to have a cannonball coming right at you. So be sure and stay tuned. Okay, returning to the impact zone seemed like a better idea than going back to the grand room in Houston. You know, the grand room where grandma and grandpa hang out. But hey, let's look at those two shots and see where they landed. Yep, we were able to plop one in the pond. Actually, two. But you know what? We barely made it. And after applying some Louisiana windage to our calculations, we were kind of thinking that we would land somewhere out there in the middle of the pond, 400 yards or so from our launch platform, which is way back up there on the other side of all those trees. Like I said, about 400 yards from the middle of the pond. But instead, one of our shots, and I'm going to walk into the bright sunshine here, one of our shots landed right here. And you can tell the grass has grown up a little bit since we made those shots uh, a few weeks ago. But the first shot landed right here at the water's edge and the second shot landed over there about, oh, 10 yards from the first shot. So they were pretty close together, but they were no, nowhere near the middle of the pond. So what went wrong? You know what, if you've got some thoughts on that, because obviously we're still learning, um, let us know because uh, we really thought we were going to land way out there. But right now, let's get to the fun part <laughs> and see what it looks like to have a cannonball coming right at your face at about 165 miles an hour. Not only the sight, but also the sound. And just to set the stage for you, the shots are coming from right over there on the other side of that grassy knoll, and they're going and landing to the right-hand side of the fish feeder way over there on the levee. That's where the shots are going. The first shot is going to skip, well, it's going to skip several times. See if you can figure out how many times it actually skips. And it's a lower velocity shot. That second shot, that's the one that's coming at 165 miles an hour. Try not to blink. You know, I've watched that footage probably a hundred times and every time I do, it makes me smile all over again. And here's my question to you, did you flinch or blink? But uh, you know what, it's our privilege to bring content each week and, uh, and if you like what you see and you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. But also, if you've already subscribed, 
uh, give us a like. Um, maybe even share our video with a friend or two. And, um, and we'd love to hear from you in the comments. So, you know what? We'll see you in the next video. Until then, so long.